on the topic of migraines and magnesium, um, migraines are caused by m many factors, um, from food to stress to um, overactivity of the brain, lack of serotonin. There's so many different keys. Uh, one of the other things that causes migraines is a uh, brain dysfunction, you know, trying to connect one part, trying to connect and they can't connect neurotransmitters, misfiring. There's, there's like incoherencies that are creating this migraine as well. And, um, nerve signals, um, um, you know, coming through this, like try, what is it called again? The, the name of that, um, trigeminal, 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 trigeminal nerve. It's funny, I learned a lot of these things in France um, as a naturopath that's schooling there. Um, and now uh, when I say things in English, it's like <laughs> trigeminal. And you look it up, it's like, no, it's the trigeminal, tri tri you know? And I'm like, ah, I said it wrong. So um, I get this French mix-up. Sometimes I even put my verbs after, um, you know, or before, or whatever. I put them in the wrong order. But anyway, uh, you have to forgive me. But so um, this nerve um, also, um, you know, indicates the pain. So there's pain chemicals that run through there, sometimes induced by lack of serotonin. Uh, drop, a sudden drop. Um, there can be allergies. There can be other things. Uh, circulation. Um, deficiencies, toxins, it can be hormonal. I mean, you know, there's just so much going on with the migraine, but, um, but I will say one thing that, um, in a lot of cases, I mean, they used to just give magnesium oxide or something for migraines. And so it just shows you that magnesium is so prevalent for everything. Um, the tissue of the brain, the structure, when it comes to, I wanted to focus more on the nerve signals and brain chemicals because their conduction through the brain and their efficiency is all going to be based on the structure, the lattice structure of the plasticity of the um, synapses and the whole circuit of the neurotransmitter um, um, the circuit that the neurotransmitter travels on, um, this lattice, if it's coated with this high level of magnesium, imagine these little sparkles along this lattice. Well, this is going to help allow for that electricity to move all the way through that lattice properly. So it's not for any chance that magnetism, electromagnetism, and, and you know, electricity, there's a connection between these words. There's a connection between how um, the electromagnetism works in the blood as well. Um, so um, magnesium, um, as you know, they've done studies that, you know, 50% less migraines when you're taking magnesium supplements daily. And uh, there's been tons of studies that show that magnesium is efficient for migraines. But what's interesting um, is that um, it doesn't mean that, you know, I'm, I'm trying to give you a cure to stop something that's very chronic and took 10 years of intensity to, to, to get itself put in place and you're just going to solve it like that. But, but magnesium levels are going to be a key feature to the recreation of the structures uh, over time, which will heal that um, area and regenerate that area. So that's a, like kind of a long game. But even in the short game, if you think of like transdermal magnesium, where you're able to apply directly to the head, uh, on the top of the head, which is what I like to use. Um, but um, so this goes in locally. And when it gives in locally, the transdermal magnesium has like a little microcirculation change that happens beneath the surface. And this helps to alleviate some of the pain. Um, this doesn't mean it will solve the etiology or the problem of your exact migraine. Like I said, there's so many things of troubleshooting, but if you want to troubleshoot, you have to start with the deficiencies. That's the first place you have to troubleshoot and the environment too. Okay. So we can troubleshoot those at the same time, but your deficiencies are the most important because they're the closest environment you have, which is you. And then the, the, the environment around you also becomes important. Like what, how am I becoming intoxicated? Uh, intoxicated by all of these plastics and heavy metals and 4G and coagulated blood from electronics and 5G and all this Wi-Fi and why do we have our Wi-Fi on, you know, in our house? Why don't we do cable and why do we have all these things which are affecting us and messing up our sleep? And even if we don't feel it, they're destroying our deep sleep. And so why do we even play this game, you know? 
Um, so we, we're just starting to wake up to that. I mean, you can find hospitals with these like 4G towers built on top of them. That's how ridiculous this is. So, um, so that all of these things can be environmental factors which play into your migraines and your lack of recovery, which also play into your structural integrity. Da, 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 da. So, which all play into inflammation, right? So, inflammation is going to be the background noise of all of that combination of events because inflammation is going to be the the, the the result and the number one remedy against inflammation, whether it be in the brain or any other structure, is going to be magnesium. Another problem with brain functioning as far as synapses and um, proper uh, conduction is a calcium. Calcium deposits everywhere in the body but also in the brain. And this is also why magnesium is interesting because it's a natural calcium channel blocker. It allows calcium to come into the cells but at the right rate and allows the cells to maintain their integrity, giving them a flexible structure. That's what calcium and magnesium, that's how they work together. Calcium is hard, magnesium is a little softer, more flexible. They come together, you have the teeth. And the, the teeth are stronger because they're flexible at the same time as being hard. So imagine that at the structural level, the cellular level, and every other level. Um, even You can even find the platelets, like the, the little donut-shaped platelet is also, magnesium gives it a certain structural capacity to on onload and offload, uh, upload and download, maybe, I don't know, onload and offload um, oxygen. And, and so it's a better del delivery vehicle because it's not over bonding, over sticking to that substance. Uh, we know well that it also removes the stickiness out of the blood. And that's why it's so good for diabetes. That's why they used to always give magnesium for diabetes as well, because it helps the blood to become a little bit thinner, but without doing the, you know, synthetic um, you know, blood thinners. This is a natural way of doing it. Natural calcium channel blocker, etc. So these things are important. Magnesium, and it's not the antithesis of calcium, but it helps calcium to work properly to where it doesn't depose and create problems and, and rigidity in the areas where it goes. And, and it also, I mean, of course, vitamin D and vitamin K2, and you need all these hormones to help aim these, uh, to target. You need like an active principle that's targeting and aiming and so that's what those hormones are doing. Um, but they're helping to aim that into the right place and direct it, I guess you could say, through their signaling. Um, so there is intelligence in the body. There is distributed executive. And that's what I like to call magnesium sometimes, and especially in a lattice type of way of looking at it, is that it's well distributed executive, these little sparkles throughout that structure, that calcium structure or that tissue structure or whatever it is. Uh, you know, magnesium composes the collagen, the elastane, the proteoglycans, all every level of, of our tissue. And so um, it's going to be in, um, built into that structure um, for a greater electromagnetic capacity and even antibiotic capacity. Like the magnesium serves as a micro mineral, just like a salt would place through all of those tissues. It serves as its own little mini immune system because in you know how stupid would it be to just have to have soldiers and guards right and that's your immune system you know all these neutrophils and neutrophils and um, neutrophil neutrophils neutrophils and uh endothelial cells and macrophage and all this why why have need all that it's like wouldn't you want the population to be armed wouldn't you want the, the each person to have their own you know it's kind of like they said Back in the day, you couldn't just rob a bank like you can today because everybody was armed. So if you didn't bring a gang of people to rob the bank, um, you know, you'd just get shot by, you know, just an everyday citizen. They were everywhere with guns. So, so it's this idea, like I'm not talking about gun control here. I'm just saying in the body, there's this notion of, you know, getting well-distributed executive, well-distributed decision-making to that degree, active principles everywhere and not just centralized power. This little unit has everything. This, it's not centralized. It's much more ubiquitous and, and, and intelligent, you know? Like, don't place those vitamins just here. Place them in the skin. Well, the skin's everywhere. Put the magnesium, don't just put it like here. Put it in the skin. And the skin can hold it and distribute it and re, and uh, absorb it and, um, and break down those particles into smaller and smaller levels that the body can use, those metals, I guess you could say.
through our acidification processes and fat processes, lipidic processes that allow that to attach to certain things and then become like food. So just, but the thing is, is what I recommend to people is to do it um, with the best quality you can because that changes everything. Uh, to use a transdermal magnesium, that's what we recommend, through the head, for example, or you start more progressively, just get used to it. So solar plexus here on the abdomen, 10 to 20 sprays, but over time, use it wherever you want. And, and to use this locally, you have a, a much stronger effect, closer effect. You can also use it for um, just your daily treatment of magnesium to bring those levels up in the body ubiquitously everywhere. So... Um, um, the best stuff that you can find is usually in the blue glass bottles. It's got the Zextine Inside logo on there. If the logo is not there, it's not the real thing. It can be called Genuine or Permian or Ancient or whatever it's called. But if it doesn't have that logo, it's not coming from the city, Vendam, in Holland, which nobody will tell you the city because that's where the actual source is. That's where it comes from. And so they don't want to go there. So they'll, they might have a laboratory in Holland and then they'll just send the Asian stuff there and then make you think they have a certificate or whatever. But there's a lot of tricks there, so you need to just go straight to the source. $3 a week, it doesn't cost a lot. Glass bottles only without endocrine disruptors. Get the best of the best that a lot of the doctors are using in Europe. And watch out for the American brands that are doing this kind of diluted, solvent-extracted version, which is coming from Asia, and then it's remarketed to look like it's Zextine or whatever. Get the real deal uh, from theheartoftradition.com. Thanks.